Hey guys, this is Denny. And this is James from TV. And so today we have another white tea from T Beaver. Yeah, episode 69. Yep. Um, so we have a white peony tea. Uh, white tea is another very classic white tea. Yep. Um, from the Fujian province. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's um, I think there's two varieties. I just, I just looked. Two varieties, eastern and western Fujian. So, um, yep. but yeah, uh, this is just... Um, another super common uh, white tea, and apparently it's sort of uh, prized for it's a little bit more robust, subtler yep. flavor, and um, yeah. Yeah, and so as a result, it's kind of recommended, and TV Beaver has this recommendation as well. They use a little bit hotter water to just extract more from it, and uh, it, the Chinese name is Bai Mudan, and it's kind of like a tea that goes hand in hand with the silver needle, kind of like Denny was saying. Yeah. It's like the other type of white tea, and this one will usually be a little, be a little bit cheaper uh, than the silver needle. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're actually picked together because the silver needle is the tip, and then the second and third leaves end up being the bimudan. Right. So that's kind of the basics on this tea. And you'll notice that in terms of the appearance. You'll see the sil silver needle, white-tipped, furry, young leaves, and you'll also see the just a t kind of more typically green... Um, young leaves as well, um, and uh, white tea is given its name because of the way that it's processed. Um, and how's that uh, processed? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the the white tea is just simply um, there's no stopping the. I'm sorry, it does not oxidize at all. Um, so whereas something like green tea will be, um, can be, uh, withered. I don't think this will be withered at all. I think it's just... Yeah. Well, the main difference is that the, uh, the, uh, oxidation stopped by just having it sit in the sun and the sun will stop it rather than doing some kill green type thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the clarity similar to the silver needle looks good. So we will go ahead, uh, without a rinse. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm noticing, interestingly enough, that the um, the the second and third leaves are gonna get more moist more quickly, and I wonder if it's because of the furriness. Because if you remember from last episode, the white um, the the silver needle was almost resisting. It was so buoyant in the water, it was almost resisting. I know you gotta submerged. push that down. Yeah, and I I'm curious uh, to see. Um, if the intensity of this flavor will, will yeah. change dramatically or not. And the viscosity looks a little bit higher, mm -hmm. uh, just from the look of things. Yeah, much more of that sort of kind of deep yellow. Yep. Yeah, really nice. You know what's one of the interesting things that I've been hearing is that teas, uh, is white tea aged, and usually when they talk about that, they're not talking about silver needles aged, they're talking about teas like this that have a little bit more robustness and body that can perhaps age into some period of time. Interesting. I'm curious to try that. Well, cheers. Cheers. Mm. Really nice. And that like sweet, again, kind of that sweet corn flavor. You know, it's yeah. very similar in a lot of ways, uh, not surprisingly, to Silver Needle in the in the flavor profile, but it is absolutely coming out stronger, um, uh, and a little bit sweeter to me. Yeah. You know, I think the flavor is just a little bit more robust, um, in terms mm -hmm. of body. There's a little bit more, uh, astringency that is hinting at, of course, as a result of the higher water temperature that mm -hmm. we're using. Um, but... I like this. Um, the so. The cost is actually significantly less than the silver needle. So for a casual drinker like myself, I might usually opt for something like this over the silver needle um, because I just don't have white teas all that often. And coincidentally, I'm actually preferring this. So I wonder, I wonder what's up with that. Really nice, really delightful mouthfeel. One of my favorite parts of white tea. Um, it tends to be the sort of velvety texture. Yeah, velvety, silky. Yeah. Kind of reminds me a bit of, uh, like, those really, really furry uh, black teas from mm. the Yunnan a little bit, even mm. though F Fujian, uh, Fujian and, and Yunnan are obviously very far apart, so the terroir would presumably be quite different. Yeah, absolutely. 
and uh, just in terms of brewing parameters, so we cover the, the basics. Um, five grams of dry leaf, and we have a, what, 120 milliliter? Uh, yeah, 100, 120, um, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty basic. You don't need to, white tea is kind of like green tea and black tea in some sense, uh, where you don't need to, like, punch it up with a ton of leaf. Like, oolong and puer can do very, very well with using a lot of leaf. Right. Um, white tea, green tea, black tea, I would hold back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think mean, that's a smart recommendation. Yeah, so you can see the color is even stronger, even though the steep time was shorter, and mm -hmm. that's kind of... As we talked about in the previous episode, um, the, the leaves have just absorbed more of that flavor um, in the first steeping, and now they're giving out it quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, really beautiful honey aroma. Yeah, and I think the great thing about this tea is I think it's something like $2 an ounce or $3 an ounce. Oh. Very, very affordable, um, considering. So, mm. if you like this tea, uh, you have a very, very affordable daily drinker on hand. Quite nice. Wonderful aroma. Ooh, beautiful. Nice and bright. I mean, it looks and reads like a green tea in the cup. Yep. Um, but the flavor profile is very much of a white. Um, really lovely. This is great in summertime. I don't know why I have not been drinking white tea this summer. That's ridiculous. Um, uh, um, and yeah, this is just really, really lovely. Um, and when could you see yourself drinking this? Yeah, you know, I was actually just thinking about that. I, I think that this stands alone quite well. Um, it would be hard to pair with food because it's it's, it's a very rich, uh, rich taste. Um, so. I could see it being kind of like a really nice afternoon tea. I like pu'er in the morning, uh, just because it's kind of more of a, a bite. Like bright pu'er. Yeah. Um, exactly. Um, I've been I've been even been just doing iced bright pu'er this uh, in Interesting. The just to cool off a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, this is quite a, one of the benefits of bright pu'er is that you can overbrew it. Until it's a pitch black liquid and just add some water, calm it down a little bit. Definitely. Man, I bet that's what they do at a uh, Chinese restaurant. <laughs> I don't think they're uh, I don't think they're there with their iPhone to like wait, wait. <laughs> steep the tea, steep the tea. <laughs> no. They're they're probably overbrew it and <laughs> add some water at the end. Yeah. And um so back to this tea though. So James, in terms of um how many times you can brew this and things like that, what's your, your best guess? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if this, I, I think if we were to use a lower temperature, we could probably brew this for five or six steeps easily, um, but under these conditions, it might be a little bit less, uh, yeah. but that's just kind of my intuition, because we are using stronger parameters, mm -hmm. so we might be extracting a little bit more, yeah. rather than spreading it out over a number of steeps. Yeah, absolutely, and you can see the, the um, I was color is getting yellow gold. Yeah. Very pretty. Beautiful. Good clarity, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good good quality um, base material. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would think that you would you would hope to get a solid for including a lighter for yeah. steeping. And I think, I think under these brewing parameters, you could easily get four. Definitely. Yeah. Oh. Um, and so where can someone find out more about tea and white tea? Oh, Mm. Well, I, I think this probably last five steeps. Yeah. Yeah, considering this is the third. Nice and, th nice and thick. Losing um, the sweetness, but still there. Yeah, yeah well, and so f feel free to visit us online, guys, tdb.org. Um, we have uh, a diverse amount of, of information about all sorts of teas, uh, and we're covering more and more that we come upon. Um, and uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe. Um, and James, you want to shout out T Beaver? Yeah, yeah. So please check out T Beaver. Um, they've got a lot of good teas. They offer just a huge variety of teas, and and I think they do a very good job of curating the teas, especially for people that are new and want to learn. It's a very very basic uh, buying experience, and a lot of the intro pours and intro white teas and stuff like that. Very, very solid quality, so absolutely. I would uh, I would definitely recommend them. Yeah, absolutely, and you'll get 
a handful of different samples in here of different types of teas. So for that reason alone, I think this is a really great um, purchase just because you can, if you're really, really new and you have, you know, you love going to the tea shop and, and, and going through the whole ceremony and using a guy on and so forth, try this out um, and see, pick from here and see what kind of flavor profiles you like yep. and start there. Um, yep. And that's a really great place to start. Yeah, they have a lot of these sample packs where you basically get two different teas of each each one and so we've been kindly gifted these by tea beaver but um just a lot of small sizes so you don't have to fully commit towards anything so yeah. it's a very very friendly place for someone new to tea to come and learn yeah absolutely and um with that we'll see you guys next time yep thanks for watching guys cheers